Welcome to Cabal Week. The Cabal represents the mages, priests, and warlock faction, and they're pretty crazy cultists. According to the blog reveal, the Cabal is all about potions, craziness, and there's a small hint that we are at our strongest when our decks only have a single copy of each card, according to the blog post. Now, of course, we know that Kazakus is a big Reno theme. And now we begin with our time-honored tradition of looking at neutral cards in ascending order of mana and then into the class cards, of which, amusingly, we start off with some hogs. Four mana, four, four, sometimes charge if your opponent's hand is empty. In constructed or in arena, your opponent's hand will very rarely be empty on turn four. And so basically it's a four mana, four, four, which really rarely charges at the end, which is super bad. Rip Hog Chopper. I wonder if people would be interested in the if I was a developer segment, but if I was a developer, I would have made it so if your opponent's hand has like one or less cards, one or fewer, I think that's the fewer is the right English, right? It is. To join our hogged friend, we have Spiked Hog Rider. A five mana five five charge is really good. It's just that this charge is super inconsistent. Worth mentioning that against the metagame of shamans, shamans very often have taunts between Feral Spirit and uh, the Taunt Totem. So you're getting a 5 mana 5-5 five, five charge sometimes. This hog is one I can kind of respect. It's just that it's not good against quite a number of decks. It's like bad enough that even if the metagame were right and all the right taunt minions were there, between like Bloodhoof Brave and Fierce Monkey and Feral Spirit, Thing from below, which it actually trades with evenly, which is very unfortunate because you paid 5 mana to kill your 0 mana thing. Basically, why aren't you playing Black Knight instead? That's a good point. But probably out of the three hogs, this one is the best. Uh, next up, we have the leader of these, uh, this gang of three. The Leatherclad Hog Leader. What a babe. Your opponent has six or more cards in hand, gain charge. Uh, to punish those... What, what deck has six or more cards in hand consistently? Well, I mean, it's a punish card. I happen to like these cards that have conditional effects. It's just that this condition isn't fulfilled that often. Probably couldn't make it a 6-7 stat line because that would make Boulder Fist Ogre obsolete. That said, it's not that bad to print upgrades or slight upgrades on cards that I don't, don't really see you play. If I were a developer, I thought a 7-6 stat line would be pretty interesting here to really punish those players which have 6 or more cards. All in all, I don't think the Hog Trio will see any play, but I like the direction of trying to punish specific decks. In Arena, 6 mana 6-6 six, six isn't bad, but it certainly isn't good, and you'll very rarely have an opponent with 6 or more cards in hand at that time. Madame Goya is a pretty tough card to review. To Magic Through the Gathering players, you'd certainly expect to be able to look through your library and then like swap it out with a specific minion, but it is in fact a random minion, just to clarify that. Would be super OP if you could pick the minion, but since it's a random minion, uh, it is similar to Barnes in that Barnes usually you want to summon very specific minions which have really good effects. With Madame Goya, you just want to summon a high mana cost minion. So come to think of it, it's very difficult to actually compare this card with anything, but I decided maybe it's just a super Master of Evolution. Master of Evolution is a Shaman card, it's 4 mana, 4, 5. So if you were to Madame Goya, you'd want to use it on a low value minion. Let's say your minions and deck have an average mana cost of 5. Madame Goya in that case, if you add the stats together, uh, would have like an 8-8 eight, eight in terms of value. Now the bad news is that you are swapping over a minion in your deck, so if you swap something terrible that's like a one-cost card, or like a Living Roots token, for example, then eventually you're going to draw that card, or token. Like, you can use the Paladin Hero Power, you can use the Shaman Hero Power, and someday you're going to draw a really bad card. Uh, so perhaps better to Madame Goya a card after you've just done a trade, and then it has really low health, and then you Madame Goya it. Uh, it seems like if you run a deck with a fairly high-ish mana curve with low-cost spell minions or 
something like that that you can easily get a Madame Goya to go off of if you need to, or high health minions that you can trade and then Madame Goya away, it might be decent enough value. And if you run it in uh, some kind of special Reno deck, yes, it is possible to live the dream and Madame Goya your Reno back and then have two casts of Reno. And wow, that's amazing, but I think that's super impractical. Now, while we're talking about Reno, I suppose I'll go deeper into the dream, where you play your Reno, you get your full health back uh, on the following turn, you trade your Reno against something, it survives with uh, just barely any health, you Madame Goya your Reno back into your deck, and then you get Ragnaros out. That's a true riches to rag story. Either way, Madame Goya is certainly a very interesting card. Cabal Chemist is the third of the tri-faction cards in the Cabal, so adding a random potion to your hand, how good is that? For once, I can actually legitimately say I have no idea because the potions in its entirety have not been revealed yet. Now it is a random potion, it's not a discover potion, so this card really depends on how good the potion pool is. And random potion has been confirmed to be all the collectible potions, the collectible card potions, in this set. I know that if I'm playing a mage or warlock deck, I probably don't usually want to get pint size potion, but potion of madness could be good, dragonfire potion is awesome, volcanic potion has its uses. So is a random potion better or worse than a card? Well, it has its slight benefits because if you're playing a mage, you can get dragonfire potion, and dragonfire potion is a really good card. Anyways, it has the surprise value of being able to pick a potion from other classes which could mix well. How good is this card? Initially I'm going to say it probably doesn't beat out Numish Inventor, but it depends on how good all the potions in this set are. So here's one of the new potions, Volcanic Potion. Demon Wrath in Mage, except the demons don't get exempted. When I think about Volcanic Potion though, uh, it has been a while since we've played with Demon Wrath. And it is a one mana discount on Consecration. Consecration is played very often. Unlike Maelstrom Portal, uh, which Shaman has the natural spell damage totem, mages don't have spell damage totems, but they have Cold Sorcerer and they still have the good old Blood Mage Thanos and Azure Drake. But unfortunately, Volcanic Potion isn't really going to get the use of spell damage that much because of the all minions. Uh, claws, which means you'd want to play it in more of a control deck. Will it possibly fit Freeze Mage? Well, you have Blizzard and Flame Strike already, but this is a nice cheap removal. I think it looks underwhelming, but after kind of talking about it with myself, it's a nice little addition to the Mage AoE crew. I think it has its place in a proper control deck somewhere. Possibly a worthy addition in that Reno Kazakus one of Volcanic Potion. And in Arena, uh, Demon Wrath was pretty good. Volcanic Potion will also be pretty good. Grimscale Chum is another addition to the low-cost Paladin deck, especially with Murlocs. So this is a really stat-efficient Murloc. One mana, two, one's pretty decent. And giving a random Murloc in your hand plus one plus one is fantastic, since you'll probably be playing in a Murloc deck. And also, it's actually a one mana, three, two. Like, you can actually call it that. And Murlocs tend to be low cost cards, and those are the cards you want to boost. I feel like Gr Grimscale Chum might be the start of a valid Murloc deck. Uh, you've got Finja, which can be really good when buffed. You've got the Paladin cards, which buff all the cards in your hand. Why not all Murlocs? You've got the Paladin card, which digs up a bunch of one drops. Why not Grimscale Chum as a premium one drop as well? Uh, this. Looks very promising. And finally, we'll round it out with Abyssal Enforcer. Man, this is really exciting. The 7 mana 6 6 demon basically Hellfires the board. Hellfire is a played card in Control Warlock, it's 4 mana. So you're tacking on an extra 3 mana and you're getting a 6 6 for it. Wow. I can't remember the last time that Warlock's got a really good big minion. We've had Dr. Boom. Oh, wait, that's neutral. Doomguard? Oh wait, that wasn't really played in control. Chogol? Oh wait, just kidding. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much just since Melganis, and with Melganis, you only really played Melganis because you cheated it out with Voidcaller. Warlocks have not had a valid, like, solid play-by-itself minion 
in a very long time, and Abyssal Enforcer is that one of them. Dread Inferno is very comparable, it's one mana fewer, and you get deal one damage to all other characters instead of deal three. Uh, so this is well worth the boost in price. When I was playing Arena Lock deck, I was actually playing Dread Inferno, but I would gladly pay the extra mana in order to clear all the totems and the Feral Spirits. I like very much that Warlock is getting an actual control option. And I expect to see this card in every single Reno Lock deck. And I expect for there to at least be some Reno Lock experiments, especially with Kazakus and Reno being together in the same expansion for a very brief amount of time. And if the Cabal is all about having single cards as kind of a theme for increasing their power, well then, Abyssal Enforcer seems like a very strong fit in a one card of deck. In Arena, and it's kind of funny how Crip was given this card to review since he is an Arena expert, this card is really strong and it's common, so hey, Warlock's finally getting some love in there. This is a really good Arena card. And you have the natural, the new set usually gets a additional boost in terms of card offerings, and this is common, so we, we praise our new Warlock Overlords in Arena. It's been so long that we've seen a good Warlock minion that I'm actually kind of speechless on this. I can't emphasize enough how good of a card this is. Hellfire, which is a good card, 4 mana, and then you have a 3 mana 6-6, six, six, which is an amazing card, and then you combine them together. This card is ridiculously good. The only question is, can you run 2-0 since it costs 7?